हेलो स्टूडेंट सो लेट सी दि बोन दि फिमर दि फिमर इन आयुर्वेदा इट इज ऑल्सो कॉल्ड दि उर्वस्ती एंड इट इज दि था बोन एंड इट इज दि लॉन्गेस्ट एंड दि स्ट्रांगेस्ट बोन ऑफ दि लोअर लिंग एज इट इज दि लॉन्ग बोन सो इट शुड बी डिवाइडेड इन टू दि अपर एंड मिडल शाफ्ट एंड दि लोअर एंड सो दि साइड डिटर्मिनेशन ऑफ दिस बोन दैट इज दि हेड इट इज राउंडेड विच इज डायरेक्टेड मिडियली the lower end it is expanded to forming the condyles that is the medial and the lateral condyle and the shaft it is the cylindrical shape which is anteriorly convex and posteriorly it is concave so it denotes the side determination of the femur so let's see the details of the femur so here in this diagram you can see that is the femur so that is the upper end this is the middle shaft and this is the lower end so let's see first that is the upper end so the upper end of the femur it includes that is the head this is the neck that is the greater trochanter and this is the lesser trochanter <coughs> then the inter trochanteric line and the inter trochanteric crest which is present on the posterior side so let's see first that is the head so head forms more than the half of the spear and it is directed in anatomical position that is the medially upwards and slightly forwards so here you can see this one that is the position of the femur then this head of the femur it articulates with the acetabulum cavity of the hip bone to form the hip joint this one then the rough pitted area this one which is present just into that the center of that the head of the femur that is called the pit and this is called the fovea that the pit like structure is present it is called the fovea this one then the neck so this one so the neck connects the head with the shaft so that is the head and this is the shaft so between this that is part it is called the neck then the neck has two borders and two surface that is the two border upper border this is the lower border and two surface anterior surface and posterior surface so let's see first that is the upper border so this one so the upper border it is concave horizontal here you can see that is the concave horizontal and meets the shaft at the greater trochanter so this one the lower border this one it is straight obliques and meet the lesser trochanter so here you can see that is the lesser trochanter then the anterior surface so the anterior surface of the neck it is flat and it is meet the shaft at the inter trochanteric line so this one red color here you can see then this part is totally intra capsular the articular cartilage of the head it may be extend to that this surface then the posterior surface so the posterior surface it is convex from above downwards and concave from side to side and it meets that the shaft at the inter trochanteric crest so here in the another diagram you can see that is this one that is the inter trochanteric crest then the posterior surface it is crossed by a horizontal groove this one for the tendon of the obturator externus then this neck makes an angle with that the shaft at 125 degree in the adductor so here this angle that is the 15 125 degree and it is less in female and that is occurs due to that the wide pelvis in the female then the trochanter shaft angle it is about the 8 degree in the adductor so the greater trochanter so the greater trochanter it is the quadrangular prominence located at the upper part of the junction of neck with the shaft then the upper border of this trochanter it lies at the level of the center of the head so this one then the greater trochanter has the upper border so this one then apex then the three surfaces so this is the apex 
that is upper border and that is the three surfaces that is the surfaces are the anterior medial and that is the lateral so this is anterior this is medial and this is the lateral surface so first that is the apex so this one so that is the apex it is in turn posterior part of the posterior border the anterior surface this one the anterior surface it is rough in its lateral part and the medial surface it presents rough impression above and a deep trochanteric fossa to that the below the lateral surface this one that is it is crossed by the oblique ridge which is directed downwards and the forward so this one then after then let's see that is the lesser trochanter so this one so in the another diagram you can see this is the lesser trochanter so the lesser trochanter it is the conical projection so let's see that is the greater trochanter so the greater trochanter it is the quadrangular prominence which is located into that the upper part of the junction of neck with the shaft this one then the upper border of the greater trochanter it lies at the level of the center of the head then the greater trochanter it is here that is the apex and the three surfaces that is the apex this one and the three surface anterior this is the medial and this is the lateral so let's see that is the apex so apex this one it is turned posterior part of the posterior border of that the greater trochanter then the anterior surface this one it is rough in the lateral part and the medial surface it is present a rough impression above and deep inter trochanteric fossa so here then that is the lateral surface so lateral surface it is crossed by the oblique line or the ridge which is directed downwards and the forwards after then let's see that is the lesser trochanter so this one lesser trochanter or in the another diagram you can see this is the lesser trochanter so the lesser trochanter it is the conical eminence directed medially and the backward from the junction of the posterior inferior part of the neck with that the shaft then the inter trochanteric line so in the another diagram you can see this one this is the inter trochanteric line so it marks the junction of the anterior surface of the neck with the shaft of the femur and its prominence rough ridge which begins above in the antero superior angle of the greater trochanter so this one and it is continuous below with that the spiral line this one the spiral line it winds around the shaft below that the lesser trochanter to reach the posterior surface of the shaft so here you can see that is the spiral line this one which winds the shaft below that the lesser trochanter to reach that the posterior surface so that is the posterior view then the inter trochanteric crest so this one so it makes the junction of the posterior surface of the neck with the shaft of the femur and it is smooth rounded ridge which begins above from the posterior superior angle of the greater trochanter and ends into that the lesser trochanter so from this is greater trochanter this is lesser trochanter so that is the inter trochanteric crest the rounded elevation a little above it is middle it is called the quadrate tubercle so here you can see that is the quadrate tubercle then that is the shaft of the femur so the, this is the posterior view this is the ventral or the anterior view so shaft of the femur it is more or less cylindrical and it is narrowest in that the middle and it more expanded inferiorly than that the superior side then it is convex forward and directed obliquely downwards and the medially 
then the middle one third of the shaft then the middle one third of the shaft has the three borders that is the this is the medial border this one that is the lateral border and the posterior border so this one that is the posterior border so posterior border that is also called the linea aspera then the three surfaces that is this one that is the anterior surface this one this is the, the medial surface and that is the lateral surface this one so let's see that is the medial and the lateral border so this one middle one third so the medial and the lateral border it is the rounded and ill defined and the posterior border it form the broad rough area this one it is called the linea aspera and this linea aspera have the two lips that is one it that is the medial lip and this is that the lateral lip this one then the medial and the lateral surfaces so here this is the anterior surface which is present went to that the <coughs> medial and the lateral border this is the anterior surface and that is the medial and the lateral surface so this one that is the medial surface this is the lateral surface so this one <coughs> then the upper one third of the shaft of the femur this one the upper one third of the shaft of the femur it has the four surfaces this is the anterior surface then that is due to presence of the medial and the lateral lip of the linea aspera this is the medial surface this is the lateral surface and this is the posterior surface between that the medial and the lateral lip of the linea aspera then into that the lower one third this one that is the ventral view and that is the dorsal or posterior view so it consists of that is the four surface again this is the anterior surface this one which is present between that the medial and the lateral border then the posterior part of the lower one third of the femur that is due to presence of the diversion of the linea aspera it should be formed that is the medial surface lateral surface and this is that the popliteal surface this one then it again have the four borders that is this is the medial border this is the lateral border then this is the medial lip of the linea aspera and this is the lateral lip of the linea aspera and this medial lip it should be continued as the medial supracondylar ridge and the lateral lip it goes downwards and it is continued as the lateral supracondylar ridge this way so the upper one third of the shaft of the femur it has the four borders that is first one this is the medial border this is the lateral border and that is the posterior border it should be diverted into that the two borders so first that is this is called the spiral line and second one that is the lateral lip of the gluteal tuberosity so here you can see that is this is the lateral lip of gluteal tuberosity that is the lower end of the femur so the lower end of the femur it is widely expanded to form that is the two large condyle that is this is the medial condyle and this is the lateral condyle these two condyle they are unite at anteriorly that is by a line it is called intercondylar line so this one and posteriorly it should be divided by a deep notch it is called the intercondylar fossa this one then the articular surface so this one so the two condyles they are partially covered by the large articular surfaces which is divisible into that the patellar surface where that is the patella is attached and the tibial surface where that is the tibia is attached to that the condyle so the articular surface of the patella it is covers the anterior surface of the both condyle extends more on that the lateral side so here you can see 
between that the two condyles the surface it is grew vertically by here and it is separated from the tibial surface by the faint groove so remaining part of the articular surface that is the tibial surface then that is the tibial surface so here you can see that is the tibial surface it is covered by the inferior and the posterior surface of the two condyles so that is medial condyle that is inferior and posterior surface and here lateral condyle medial, uh, that is the inferior and the posterior surface then the part of this surface it is covered by the lateral condyle is short and straight anterior superiorly the part over that the medial condyle so this one it is longer and it is covered with the convexity directed medially this one then let's see that is the lateral condyle so this one so the lateral condyle it is flat laterally here you can see and it is more line with that the shaft of the femur this one so it takes the greater part in the transmission of the body weight of the tibia then it is less prominent than that the medial condyle and it is stouter and the stronger then at the lateral aspect there is presence that the prominence it is called the lateral epicondyle so here you can see that is the lateral epicondyle then the popliteal groove here this one that is the popliteal groove which is lies just below to that the epicondyle so this one this area it has deeper anterior part and the shallower posterior part the muscular impression which is present on the posterior superior to that the epicondyle then let's see that is the medial condyle so this one so this is the medial condyle which is convex medially and the most prominent part of that the medial condyle it is called the medial epicondyle this one then the posterior superior part of the medial epicondyle that shows the conical projection it is called the adductor tubercle and this tubercle it is important landmark then intertrochanteric fossa so this one which is present on the posterior side or that is called intercondylar notch so this notch that is separate the lower and the posterior part of that is the two condyles and it is limited anteriorly by the patellar articular surface and posteriorly by the intercondylar line which separate the notch from that the popliteal surface